Good evening and welcome to the news agenda. I'm Adas Gopal Krishnan. Viewers, as the NDA sets into motion the process of government formation, allies are flagging concerns over certain issues that they want addressed. Amongst them is the Agnipath scheme, which provides for short-term induction of personnel into the armed forces, with an aim to bring down the age profile of the three services. Those recruited under the Agnipath scheme are called Agni Veers. Now, senior JDU leader and national spokesperson of Nitish's party, the, that is, of course, Mr. Casey Tyagi, has sought a review of the scheme, saying that there is resentment amongst voters over certain aspects of the scheme and they should be discussed and resolved. But after Casey Tyagi went public with the party's view on the Agnipat scheme, another party leader, Harshwardhan Singh, called Casey Tyagi's remarks his personal views, underlining that no such discussion happened in the meeting of party leaders. However, another party leader, JDU MP, Alok Kumar Suman has asserted that what KC Tyagi said should be taken as the party's stand. These statements from the JDU clearly makes one wonder if the party is actually on the same page with regard to the Agnipat scheme or not. Agni Veer Yojana ko lekar ke janta ne resentment dikhaya hum chahte hain jo controversial issues hain us par bahas chal raha hai. Agar KC Tyagi ji ne kaha hai hamare varish neta hain तो वो आ, उन्होंने कुछ कहा होगा तो या तो उनका मन का होगा या कुछ विचार लिया होगा लेकिन हमारा ऐसा डिस्कशन यहाँ नहीं उनका जो बयान होता है पार्टी के तरफ से होता है पर्सनल तो कोई चीज़ होती नहीं है पार्टी राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष हैं तो जो भी बोलेंगे वो सार्वजनिक बातें होंगी जो भी बोलते हैं वो सच बोलते हैं और उसमें व्यक्तिगत कोई नहीं होता है और ऐसे राजनीतिक बातें वो कम करते हैं बोलते ज़्यादा नहीं हैं काम ज़्यादा करते हैं वो काम में ही विश्वास करते हैं Uh, the India Bloc was quick to amplify KC Tyagi's Agnipat demand and went a step further. Instead of JDU's demand for modifications in the scheme, Congress and SP called for immediate scrapping of the scheme, saying that there's massive anger amongst the people and that BJP should accept its mistake and roll back the scheme. Government, make it. But these are the wrong things of the government, like Agnipat. These are against it. The whole country is against it. तो मैं समझता हूं कि इसमें जो जेडीयू ने कहा वो ठीक ही कहा है इस बारे में कि अग्निवीर की योजना तुरंत समाप्त तो होनी चाहिए लेकिन पहले सरकार तो बनने दीजिए उसके बाद ही कहेंगे कुछ अग्निवीर व्यवस्था तुरंत खत्म होनी चाहिए सरकार को स्वीकार करना चाहिए कि उनकी गलती है उन्होंने अग्निवीर जैसी व्यवस्था दी न केवल अग्निवीर व्यवस्था खत्म होनी चाहिए बल्कि बहुत से नौजवान जिनको रोजगार नहीं मिल पाया फौज में जाना चाहते थे उन्हें उम्र की छूट भी देनी चाहिए तो अच्छी बात है वो तो गिनती है So now these alliance partners are coming together, but now we are also witnessing that uh, some demands have also started being raised. As JDU is, uh, leaders are saying that uh, there should be a reconsideration of the Agnivir scheme. They are also demanding a special status for Bihar. Yeah, I'm sure that all these demands will be made, and God has a large heart. I think they will be taken into account. Yeah. And the BJP, meanwhile, has remained tight-lipped on the JDU's demand. Sources say that the party has decided not to bow down unnecessarily to demands. from the jdu while following the rules of coalition dharma while bihar bjp chief samrat choudhry was asked a question on jdu's agnipat stand he merely said that the issue is being raised and has already been responded to by rajnath singh sir uh, nda ke alliance partner hai jdu agnivir pe samiksha ki baat kar rahe hain aur uh, ucc pe bhi के पूरी तरह राजनाथ जी ने अपना बयान दिया है उस पूरी समीक्षा के लिए चिंता किया है and why is this very significant because the data that we have in fact gathered as far as agni veer scheme is concerned shows a certain states where the impact of the scheme has been felt on ground both in terms of protest as well as those areas where recruitment takes place for the army let's quickly take a look at the first state of uttar pradesh where we're looking at eight seats here these are the specific seats that we're looking at the last time eight seats were won the vote share however in these seats has slipped from 2019 from 66.84% to 53 3.8% of course the vote share of other political parties the sp uh, as well as uh, the bsp of course has increased is what we understand in these seats as well let's go across to the next state now this is the state of haryana in haryana we're looking at a total number of seats of uh, uh, which are of course four uh, six seats and of these six seats 
Four have now come back to the BJP. Two have gone the way of the Congress party. If you look at the vote share, it's another story of 60.89 for the BJP coming down to 48.94 from 30.95, in fact, coming down here as well. All right, going up here, as, uh, I beg your pardon, for the Congress party, 30.95 to 47.0%. Moving on to Punjab, the next state that we're looking at, here we're discussing a total of about... Uh, uh, about eight seats, uh, uh, ten seats if I'm not mistaken. Here the number of seats for the BJP has come down uh, from one to zero. The vote share has in fact uh, uh, gone up in this particular region of 21.12%. Congress of course uh, has increased its vote share as well as seats. Uh, it is looking at, uh, alright, the Congress vote share coming down but the seats going up from three to five. And Aam Aadmi Party staying stagnant over here is from 40 to 25 percent. Moving on to the next state that we're talking about, this is Rajasthan. Rajasthan, there were eight seats won. Now four seats have been won. Uh, consequently, for the Congress Party, which had won zero seats, has now got five. And the vote share, of course, of the BJP sliding from 54 to 45, from 37 going up to 45 for the Congress Party in this particular state of Rajasthan as well. You're watching the News Hour at 10, debate number one on Times Now, Super Prime Time. Let's take this across to our guest joining us, Dr. Anandran Arthan, author is with us. Major General G.D. Bakshi, retired defense expert, is with us as well. We have with us Neeraj Kumar, senior leader of the JDU. Kamru Zaman Chaudhary is a political analyst joining us. Mumtaz Patel, leader of the Congress Party, is with us. We also have with us Samir Singh, national spokesperson of the Samajwadi Party. But let me start first and foremost with Neeraj Kumar. Neeraj Kumar, your party's leader, Mr. K.C. Tyagi, has actually sparked off this entire controversy, saying that there is need to review this. Uh, what really is going to be the stand and the extent to which the JDU will take this demand forward, sir? This is Neeraj Kumar. First of all, I want to speak in Hindi. Ji, boliye. Hindi mein boliye. No problem. Aaj teen bayan mahatpurn hai. Manni Kishi Tyagi ji ne ya bayan diya. Agni Veer Shahid vivin muddo par kis par review karna chahiye. फिर हमारी पार्टी के पार्लियामेंट्री पार्टी के लीडर माननीय ललन सिंह ने कहा कि अनकंडीशनल हमारा सपोर्ट है देन फिर केसी त्यागी जी का बयान आया कि हमारा कोई डिमांड नहीं है हमारा ये इच्छा एस्पिरेशन है ये तो ये हमारा फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल कि नेशनल स्पोक्स पर्सन है यह भी सच है लेकिन पार्लियामेंट्री पार्टी के लीडर ने जब बोला वही महत्वपूर्ण होता है हमारा कोई भी प्री कंडीशन नहीं है और यह भी कोई भी ऐसी बात होगी तो हम लोग कोलेशन गवर्नमेंट चलाएंगे तो कोलेशन गवर्नमेंट में डिफरेंट पार्टी रहता है तो उसका अपना अपना परसेप्शन रहता है लेकिन उसी के बीच ना कोई सहमति का रास्ता निकालना है इसलिए कोई विवाद की गुंजाइश इस तरीके से आज एजेंडा चल रहा है कि लग रहा जैसे एनडीए में गठबंधन में परेशानी हो गई हम लोग कंडीशन दे रहे हैं ये सब बिल्कुल ही बेबुनियाद बात है लेकिन सर बात वही है ना कि कई इश्यूज पे अब ये तो एक इशू हो सकता है जिसपे आप शायद किसी तरह का कॉम्प्रोमाइज कर सकते हैं दोनों पार्टीज मिल बैठ के बात कर सकते हैं लेकिन कई सारे ऐसे मुद्दे हैं जहां पे हो सकता है कि और डीप मतभेद हो इस तरह के बट लेट मी क्विकली ब्रिंग इन द कांग्रेस पार्टी ऑन दिस मुमताज पटेल इज ज्वाइनिंग अस ऑन द शो मुमताज पटेल वॉट यू मेक ऑफ वॉट इज बिंग स्टेटेड हिया बाई मिस्टर नीरज कुमार ही सेज दिस नॉट अ प्री कंडीशन दिस इज जस्ट अ सजेशन एंड दिस इज वॉट वी डिजायर बट इट्स नॉट लाइक द अलायंस इज गोट फॉलो पार्ट और समथिंग बिकॉज ऑफ दिस इशू वेल Well, it's early days yet. We're definitely also not uh, talking about the alliance falling. But then this is uh, this is the beauty of uh, coalition uh, coalition government and uh, alliance politics. So uh, there will, of course, be different viewpoints. It's not as if uh, everyone uh, came into the election with the same uh, manifesto, same agenda. However, the Congress Party uh, stands firm on the fact that uh, forget uh, reviewing the Agniveer scheme. It should be totally scrapped. It should be totally scrapped. Okay, that's a demand coming in. Dr. Ragnathan, how would you respond to that? The scheme should be totally scrapped. Sir, very po various political parties, including the SP, including the Congress party. And it appears that uh, Mr. Tyagi has just given them the right ammunition for the same. Dr. Ragnathan, can you hear me? 
could you repeat that because I, I could I could not hear you completely. Yeah, you know, you would have heard yes. Mumtaz Patel. She says that uh, the Congress party, as well as, uh, in fact, not just the Congress, but various political parties today, have been saying after Mr. Tyagi's reaction that this is a scheme that's fit to be completely scrapped. Do you agree with her? <laughs> Uh, no, I don't. Good evening, Madhav. And uh, let me just qualify whatever I'm going to say. Uh, I am a layman. I'm not an expert. Neither am I in the services. And there is one exalted uh, gentleman whom all of us respect, uh, General Bakshi, who's there. And his views might be in disagreement with, my, with mine, but I completely respect what his views are going to be because I've heard him on Agnivir before. Uh, I need to make a couple of points out here, Madhav, if I may just take a couple of minutes. Look, two states where Agnivir was supposedly going to decide the fate of BJP, Himachal and Uttarakhand, a referendum of sorts, the BJP has swept the elections. And as I said, I'm not an expert, I'm not in services, so I qualify that already. But here are the facts regarding the Agnipat scheme. Number one, the chiefs of all three wings of our armed forces are supporting it enthusiastically. And across decades, across different governments, I cannot think of a single instance where our chiefs have knowingly taken a decision not in the interest of either the armed forces or the nation. It follows that if they are supporting a recruitment scheme, they would have banged their heads together on this one and ironed out all possible impediments. Number two, and this was emphasized by the late General Rawat as well, the armed forces are not employment scheme. They are not Manrega. In fact, they should be and they are one of the toughest places to gain entry. Only the best should be chosen and routinely tested so that they remain the best. It follows that if our military feels there should be multiple rounds of merit-based competition, it should be encouraged and implemented such a policy. Number three, such recruitment schemes are followed by many nations. India is not an exception. China, Russia, France, USA. Number four, the world over. You want the youngest, the fittest, and the best to be trained for all future eventualities as begets their fate, as well as the fate of the nation. The UPSC and the IITs have multi-level selection process, so why shouldn't the armed forces, number five, as far as the scheme is concerned, you have a merit-based inclusion, after which you are trained for four years, at the end of which you accumulate more than 10 lakhs and you get an opportunity to further complete for a position in the defense forces. For those who do not succeed at this second step, they come out of it with a degree, 10 lakhs, and a glowing certificate of having served the country when so young, I can't think of better takes on the CV of a 21-year-old than this, can you? Finally, here are the amendments and additions to the Agniware scheme after it was launched. After, one, upper age limit extended. Two, UGC skill recognition declared. Three, bank loan priority notified. Four, 10% CAPF vacancies reserved. Five, open schooling certificate announced. Six, 10% MOD job vacancies reserved. So it is not as though the government didn't listen to suggestions. Sure, if you think Agnivir can be improved, why not? By all means, review it. But don't trash it just because you hate Modi. And finally, as for those who worry, just 10 seconds, that the trained and battle ready rejected at the end of second round would instead be recruited by underworld and terror organization. I'm sorry, but this is ridiculous. As ridiculous as saying, once rejected for the national team for Olympic boxing or short put, the tens of thousands pugilists and short putters would be recruited by stone pelters and thugs. All right, let me bring in Samir Singh, national spokesperson of Samajwadi Party. Just coming to you, General Bakshi, after this. Because Samir Singh, you heard Dr. Ragnathan. He appears to say or suggest that the benefits far outweigh whatever is being looked at as, as far as the negatives of this particular scheme are concerned. And there are top general, senior officials who have not really objected. Most of them who have served the nation have actually welcomed this scheme. Samir Singh. Good evening, Madhav. Uh, yes, I've, I've, I've heard uh, what Mr. Ranathan has said, but I beg to differ on a certain points. First, that it's not an employment scheme. It was never an employment scheme, but at the same time, people who seek employment uh, in, uh, in the Indian Armed Forces, whether it is after the Agnipat be scheme being introduced or before, it's not like they've always treated them as an employment scheme. They put their entire life's efforts into becoming uh, an army personnel, into being inducted into the Indian Armed Forces. So it was never an employment scheme, and even now, it's not an employment scheme. But on the contrary uh, the the point that uh, similarly to this point there have we have uh, while the agnipat scheme was being introduced the opposition has uh, come out with various uh, negative points various disadvantages of this scheme and not uh, just it, it's not like 100% armed personnel have been in the favor of the agnipat and now when the elections have uh, uh, happened and the results are announced and your calculations what we see 
watching the trends have shown that the BJP has been affected by the Agnipa scheme amongst various other schemes that were negative for the country but were still passed by the parliament uh, of the or the existing parliament that was that existed before uh, before these elections now we would like to thank and this is what the opposition half our agenda has already uh, has already proved why because it's not a majoritarian government it's not a bjp's a uh, clear mandate so the we expect that the alliance partners will along with the opposition will you know restrain the bjp government from gaining autocratic style that okay. it was so used to function earlier all right so we'll, get, welcome, we'll get into that uh, we'll get into that debate with the jdu but i want to bring in my, major general gd bakshi so how do you look at this entire debate because of course as dr ragnathan says politically speaking perhaps the bjp wasn't routed on the basis of this but yes their popularity their vote share and in some states even the seat share did come about come much lower than what it was in the previous lok sabha election so where do you stand on this now general gd bakshi because you have of course in the past uh, raised your voice uh, against certain provisions of this scheme look uh, yeah and i stand by those objections the simple fact is i have no business commenting on the politics of it there are enough politicians on this panel to thrash that out my objections to the scheme my reservations about the scheme i have put them across to the powers that be and i have requested and treated that it needs certain tweaking let me please give me some time uh, the fact of the matter is i understand the rationale for the scheme primarily economic the pay bill of your armed forces today is 1 lakh 6000 crores the pension bill exceeds that it is 1 lakh 11000 crores quite obviously no government can sustain this kind of an imbalance in the expenditure on serving and retired people china can't afford it united states can't afford it russia can't afford it so they have all had to uh, make Uh, amends right but there are two aspects one is the economic aspect the other is the operational efficiency aspect four years in my humble opinion is too short for a man to integrate with the unit when i joined the armed forces and we won the 71 war we had seven years color service my request to the government humble entreaty has always been please extend it to 7 if for some financial aspect it is uh, not reachable minimum it must come to 5 the retention today is 25% this must be increased to 50% please understand we have crew served weapons in the armed forces right a tank has a crew of 3 to 4 an artillery gun depending on what kind of a gun has a crew of 6 to 8 you can't have one man getting out of that crew every 6 months or 10 months right right if a unit is deployed in the siachen in ladakh in the city areas how much time will the commanding officer have to train this boy absolutely And by the time he's trained he is out right so there are major functional disabilities which can easily be corrected Okay. You don't have to throw the baby out with the bath water. Don't throw you the baby out with the bath water. I think that's the that's a number clear. of years of service to seven, if not seven, at least to five. Okay. Number one, no, no. Can I just finish? And the number two, increase retention from twenty-five to fifty percent. Okay. The fact that uh, you know it's all very well to say that they won't be if they don't find a second alternative career. You know, I served in the Punjab. That time we were desperately trying to see. that our ex servicemen do not get uh, you know uh, go astray they are not recruited by the terrorists by the maoists by the others major okay. schemes were started okay let me bring in that. let me bring in mr Please choudhry on this me. yeah mr choudhry even general bakshi who interest. has certain problems with the scheme is not saying do throw throw the baby out with the bath water at the end of the day this is not a scheme that uh, is perhaps totally uh, you know invalid but the demand of opposition parties to completely scrap the scheme is also not correct he says 
Yeah, you might have some differing views on the Agnipath scheme and the recruitment of the Agnivirs to the Indian Army. But in a, in a democracy, the beauty lies in uh, how you accept the opposition to your government policy that you might have framed from time to time. And the magnanimity lies in accepting your mistake and getting a course correction on that scheme. But we have a government who, who blundered on the Nodbandi scheme, on lo uh, launching the GST scheme in this Agnipath scheme. But one thing, Madhav, the, the, the uh, details that you are giving where the state BJP lost because of this Agnipath scheme is very wrong analysis, you know. The BJP has lost on a number of seats or its vote share has come down on different number of factors. Agnipath is Sir, one of them. Let me, let me now, educate let me you as well as our viewers. Of these Bihar. are seats where Prior the Agnipath protests happened. And these are also areas where the recruitment for the army happens. And thereby we have extrapolated these figures of these specific areas to look at the impact of the Agnipat scheme. But we're completely out of time this evening on this particular subject. Kamru Zaman Chaudhary, like to thank you, as well as Samir Singh, Mumtaz Patel, as well as Neeraj Kumar, Dr. Anand Ragnathan and Major General J.D. Bakshi. Thanks so much for joining us this evening, ladies and gentlemen.